we're getting a better idea of how Minnesota students fared during distance learning. A WCCO investigation reveals the COVID report card that shows a greater number failing to make the grade. Here's Liz Collin. After two school years filled with historic challenges and changes from a pandemic, we wanted to know what it meant for student grades across Minnesota. From Minneapolis to Marshall, South Washington County Schools to Worthington, more than a dozen districts handed us their transcripts from the last three years, with the goal of gauging student performance in grades 6 through 12. In Minneapolis, you see a dramatic drop in the number of F's in the last two years, and you'll notice a common theme we found statewide, the credit no credit system used as a way to protect students' GPAs. The number of no credits climbed in Minneapolis middle schools nearly 20 times from 2018 to the last academic year. At Minneapolis's 35 high schools, the number quadrupled. It's also easy to see the slide in St. Paul. More than 80% of the district students were passing in 2018-2019. That dropped to more than 60% in pandemic years. Again, with large numbers of students, about one-third receiving no credit for courses. I would never design a school year like last year. As superintendent of Minnesota's largest school district, David Law helped us break down Anoka Hennepin's results, where almost twice the number of students failed the class last year than did in a typical year. And where nearly a quarter of the district students received an F for a no grade and not passing. The percentage of kids in distance learning that failed was significantly higher than kids in hybrid learning. Perhaps the biggest takeaways from Anoka Hennepin has been the preference of in person instruction and the importance of school relationships based on student feedback. Distance learning was great for flexibility and pacing, but it wasn't the rigor that I needed to know to grow and know. This is what happened. We're we're not proud of it. We wouldn't we didn't pick it but we're committed to fixing it. WCCO found students also struggled in smaller school districts. In Duluth, we found more Ds. The number of Fs went drastically down and into the pass category, while Brainerd gave more than four times the amount of Fs to their middle school students than it did in previous years. In Marshall, twice as many students received Ds and Fs in grades 9 and 12. And in Worthington, we found four times the number of pass marks given this last school year and large numbers of no credits. I know that we've had a, a number of conversations with school leaders who have seen that the distance learning model for some students was incredibly difficult. We took our findings to Minnesota's Education Commissioner. Dr. Heather Mueller stands by the decision to allow districts to use the pass-no-pass -pass system through the pandemic, where flexibility and equity became top priorities as part of the department's do-no-harm philosophy. I think that that do-no-harm is really about recognizing that that in the midst of that transition were also places where we had families um, and communities who were seeing job loss. Um, we're seeing people who are out of work. We're recognizing that, that there was a lot of stressors in addition to the education and educating of our students. Including internet access and other technical trouble that the state believes held students back. But even in wealthier districts, we spotted changes. Edina's D's dropped from 2,400 to 59, and F's from 663 to 40 last school year as pass marks multiplied. In Wyzetta, the number of failing marks in middle school more than doubled from 2.6 to 7 percent. Still, Commissioner Mueller points to state dollars spent this summer that she says will help kids catch up. I am confident in our students, I'm confident in our families, and I'm confident in our school leaders and teachers in the classroom. I believe wholeheartedly. As attention shifts to a new year and new results. We know that it's not easy. We had hoped that this year would be more of a typical year than what it's looking like it might start as. Um, but we have a blueprint, which is in a very different place than we started the last time. Liz Collin, WCCO 4 News. It'll be up to each individual district to decide if it will use that pass, no pass system this school year. To take a closer look at the report cards we received, visit WCCO.com.